rolling. Yeah. All right. All right, Boomer, what are we doing? <laughs> We're at the NAB Show 2024. Walking around, checking out all the new AI, filmmaking tech, cameras, equipment, lighting. It's all here. Everybody who matters in film and media is making it happen. This thing is massive, man. There are so many booths, so many people, so many things happening. It's great for Let's go check it out. Come on. And I just wonder, like, I don't know, I'm walking around perceiving things. I've, I've certainly perceived, and, and I like to wonder, how am I being perceived? Right? Sure. We have a stage in Australia that we do virtual production. We have LED walls. All the technology you guys get to see here, we have it. We have uh, LED walls, we have camera tracking, we have uh, RV cameras, Sony cameras, and we have red cameras as well, and track, uh, camera tracking system. So I'm a cinematographer and virtual production supervisor in where I'm doing the whole integration here uh, at NAB to showcase how virtual production gets done, right? Without going crazy, like uh, getting like a huge LED walls because it's no necessary, right? No, you can You can yeah, we should shoot Okay, and three, two, one, action. So you gotta, the way that we work at Mandrake Studios is we start with what's on the screen and then we scale up, right? When I say to scale up is, it depends on the shot, it depends on the lens you use. In this case, we work with uh, anamorphic lenses with the Atlas and Co. And you know, what is on, on the shot, that's what we work with. And that's a big impact on production. So uh, I will say, you know, the magic of virtual production happens when for, on the cinematography. We do cinematography, we don't do videography. Videography is a totally different line of work, but we focus on the cinematography and what we try to, to go for that look, to, to, to be beautiful, to storytelling, even for commercials. This looking rig thing right here is what they did the creator on, which is, you know, guerrilla filmmaking, $80 million budget. But when they do it with an FX3, you have to, what they did was take raw sensor data and process it outside of the camera. So you use a Atomos or similar monitor so you can record straight out of the sensor. This is it. It's pretty interesting stuff. Thank you. Pretty cool car rig, but this track only goes up and down. I don't have gimbal control. Oh, you can't? No. No tilt? But like... That's the way it does this thing. That's probably so smooth. like the angle of the mic and why are they locked? Yeah, you know, yeah right. Play with them. Let me play with them. Let me. <laughs> I wanna. All right, so NRAW is a great um, raw compression. It's 12-bit um, and it is gonna be about half the size of ProRes RAW. But it's still gonna live in the Z8 and Z9 with ProRes uh, 42 HQ along with ProRes RAW. And then NRAW is that, that third option that'll let you get all the way up to 8K60. 
All right. Uh, right now, what you can do is you can edit it using either uh, Nidius or uh, more convention Resolve, and it really just gives you all the data. It gives you a lot of color, a lot of latitude. That's a really great option for filmmakers. Yeah. And it's internal. Right. So NRAW, I find, is definitely one of the smaller of the uh, of the RAW formats, but also because it is AK60, you're going right. to get like a lot higher. Yeah. We do have a MiRAW opposite with the Z62 and Z72. You can get the RAW upgrade, which will give you ProRes RAW or B-RAW. There is so much to know about the Z8 and Z9. All right, so these are pretty much the ultimate hybrid cameras on the market right now. Okay. Um, this is a Z8. Uh, what this camera is going to do is this is first for photo. It's a 45 megapixel that can shoot up to 120 frames a second with pre pre capture. Um, for filmmakers, we got waveform, we got peaking, we got zebras, uh, we have a bike jack, headphones. We even have USBs that are separate for power delivery and communication with the camera. Um, it's all a very lightweight package, and it takes all the Nikon Z series lenses, which is the widest, like the widest uh, diameter and the shortest, folks, uh, shortest uh, flange distance. Yeah. So we're gonna have some amazing lenses. This is our 85 millimeter f 0.95 knot. Amazing lens. Yeah. And all lenses also have uh, the ability to go linear focus, and you can you can uh, swap the directions in them as well, if you'd like. Yes. We have an 85 1.2, 0.95. We got what a 20 millimeter f 1.8s, and of course you know the 24 70 f 2.8s. Yeah, seeing like how many young 3.8ers are coming out. Very passionate about you know the art, about the gear. Yeah. You know, so like people love the lenses. People love you know like like seeing like the character of you know, and it's so great seeing like the potential of what they can create. Yeah. You know, I love it. And, and we're meeting with so many of our creator partners, you know, our influencers and like the people working with us. And, you know, it goes on beyond just like the cameras and lenses, like the tools, like all the MR stuff. And like the passion is, you know, so much more now that the, now that the red uh, partnership is here. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Like, it, like it, it, it's the future is looking really great, really bright. <laughs>
and away forms are great, but we can't forget our STEM and it's all the way from our presenter to the medium of the And shortly after, I'm going to my uh, cloudy to face. And it will pop up somewhere. And then I can um, hit this button here and invite people to come and join in this session right. and have a look in this. This is a spotting session. I'm going through the time.